Maybe somebody <laughs> else should explain. I haven't done this in a while. Um, <laughs> or you can just put up your regular hand. But, but one thing I want to explain as we go into this um, is that it, when we've had these gatherings, I have often told the people in the gathering that um, I, I feel like I am the midwife of this project of this baby who has you've been pregnant with for, for a very long time. And so my work has been to keep saying, push, push, <laughs> breathe, breathe. <laughs> um, so, and don't scream <laughs> or scream if you like, if you're muted. So we, I now turn the, the the person who will be answering question, well, we will decide who answers the question from the question. But um, who would, who has questions? I think Michael Schwartz, do you have a question? No? you. Uh, Patty, if I might just yeah. say, uh, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, there's a reactions. Oh, okay. There's a reactions uh, icon. If you click on that, you can raise a hand. Okay, yes, there it is. Not just the thumbs up. Thank you. We can't, I can't see everybody at once. Yeah, are there any hands up that I'm not seeing? Um, I, I have a way. Let's have the people raise their hands who are on the team. Okay, so now you see our team members. And now I want everyone who has helped with the renovation up to this point to raise their hands. Lou's raising her hand, <laughs> putting her hand in. <laughs> so anyway, a lot of people have been, in, have been involved in this. Okay, so any questions? Norma. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Um, I have a question about the finances. I love it. I think this is wonderful, amazing. Everything that we wanted and need. Um, but can we afford it? Um, it Russ isn't isn't here to answer that question. Who would like to answer that question? I think. Whoever does should talk about the the evaluation that we got. The someone and, from the team. Someone from the team want to answer that question. Russ is and Lena are very important parts of that this team, but they're off at a wedding, and right. he's kind of our money person. Being right. the treasurer, right. is would anyone like to answer that? Oh, Rick. Yeah. Rick. Uh, I will just make a stab at answering the question. Obviously, it is a very important question. And the answer is, we're really not sure yet. Uh, the, uh, the property has been recently reappraised. Um, so we have an, and in fact, there is a limitation on how much can be spent based on the fact that it is legally still in a floodplain. Uh, I, I don't know the exact details of that. But the, uh, the, the total that can be spent on the building is no more than 50% of the appraised evaluation. So that does put a specific limit on it. Um, so we're trying to stay below that limit in terms of, of, of projections of what it would likely cost. Uh, we don't have hard numbers about exactly what these, and, and in fact, there are a variety of different options, as you would see in the pictures, as to what we exactly de de decide to do. Uh, and as soon as you know we have a pretty definite idea, we can get more specific ideas about what it would cost. In terms of the the, uh, um, it, clearly there would have to be a capital campaign right. to raise money explicitly for that for this purpose. And the plan, the idea would be that once a basic, a fairly specific plan we had uh, uh, that looked feasible, uh, a capital campaign would be gone to, to try to see, can we raise the amount that would be necessary? Thank you, Rick. Uh, Fred, I think you, did you have something to add? Well, yes, I, uh, my experience is, um, 
I've heard from the board on several occasions that we can't afford something. And uh, I look at, we, we did something a while back about the stewardship campaign. Um, we brought a, a consultant from UUA to help us out. And uh, we were able to get the financing from that, from for that, which was about five thousand dollars, and I think it made a difference for our stewardship campaign. Yeah. If if last year is a is an example, I'd look at it as an investment. And uh, remodeling this sanctuary is sort of like remodeling your kitchen. You're going to like it a lot more, That's and you'll get more out of it. Um, so let's look at it as an investment instead of a cost. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Michael, but first I just want a, a head nod from Karen. Is that Cerise? Oh. <laughs> I can't Karen, hear you. Karen, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> oh, Karen, yeah. Who are you okay. talking to? So this is Fred. Oh, it's Fred. Yes, he's my new, he's, uh, he's everybody else kicked off except for Cerise and she needed a friend. Oh, and so this is Fred. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, just, <laughs> I saw a new face. Thank and you. He, he, so. he worries about me every time I sing. That's why oh. he ends up on the lap. He oh. thinks I'm crying in pain or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Michael, go ahead with your question. Oh, you're you're muted. There we go. A um, couple of questions. Um, Rick had mentioned that we had an appraisal that we could only work with fifty percent of that given appraisal. So that said, what's the number that we really do have to work with? So that was question one. And second one was: Is there a copy of the UUA report that was just mentioned as well? What? About the stewardship. Oh, about the stewardship that Fred mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would be in touch oh, with. I'm new, I'm new so. No, you know, I know. And I and familiar. let me, um, Fred, would you put your your email in the chat so that, oh. so that Michael can oh. be in touch with you directly? Michael oh. and and his wife Deidre have just joined our congregation, and they've come from the Chicago area. <laughs> Um, but it, um, does somebody want to answer the question? Rick, would you like to answer that question? Uh, anybody who is on the team, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Russ is the one who got the appraisal. My, my understanding was the appraisal was 600 of the current facility as it is was $640,000. Okay. And, and that's just the building, not the land. Okay. All right. That, that's good insight. Thank you. So the so the the, uh, the official limit, as we understand the rule, is no more than half of that amount. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, obviously, along the way, the team has been very conscious about that. The, the original idea was to just remove the ceiling, and expose the trusses. That seemed oh. to be the simplest, and pro and it seemed to be the least expensive option. When actually we started looking at it and realizing that uh, the roof, the, the entire insulation system would have to be changed, the insulation would have to be installed at the peak. And then it, we started looking at aesthetically what that would look like. It started to look more and more expensive to do that. And the idea of just removing the roof and starting afresh uh, permitted so many more options, more possibilities, and seemed to be a more airy, uh, mm -hmm. uh, open space that the team has sort of evolved toward that option. So that, that's wonderful. So when the architect gave you the prelim drawings that we saw, did he or she have any basic cost estimates on what, uh, what was drawn? 
Um, Dick, why don't Dick, you, you, yeah. you talk about yeah. the process? Because it's been a little different than that. We've, we have um, been talking with structural engineers, but this, Dick, you can answer this question beautifully. <laughs> well, um, so we've been working with the architect and we've been working with a uh, general contractor who does um, also does commercial. And yeah. he's been kind of giving us some estimates along the way. And um, he can't really give us a very close estimate. Of course, the plan keeps changing. That's another issue. But um, without seeing how the building would actually go together from the engineer. So we'd have to get the plan and then the drawings from the architect to the engineer. And the engineer figures out how it's actually going to work so it stands up. So no one's given us like what they call a swag estimate, like a scientific wild ass guess estimate. <laughs> We've had some. Um, you got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, some of the estimates we put together is like uh, between two twenty and two sixty. Okay, all right, that's was, helpful. You know, just kind of shoot shot in the dark on that, but you know, mm -hmm. educated. Right. right, right. Art, Art, you've got a question. Well, Mary Ann just mentioned over here that uh, the, the amount we can spend on, on building remodeling is a lifetime amount. So if we spent the full 320,000 right now, we would, wouldn't be able to do any other remodeling of anything ever again in the building unless the appraised value went up. Unless higher. the appraised value goes up, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, the fact, uh, just the, addressing that, I suspect that the appraised value would go up significantly as a result of the renovation itself. Mm -hmm. So they're, they interact, right? Yeah, thank well, you. It looks like Mary Steenhook had, do you want to go ahead, Dick? You want to add something? And then Mary, you have a question. Okay. I was going to say that the, um, the community development person also said that they're looking at taking us out of the floodplain. So in the next year, um, we may not be having that limit. We could spend a uh, million dollars. <laughs> Some of us love that limit. So here we go. <laughs> okay, Mary, you have a question. I appreciate all the work that's been done and the focus on making it more spacious. I wondered how you were addressing the natural light question. Are, are there ways that we're going to have more natural light in the space? Or mm -hmm. that's does my question. Somebody, you know, <laughs> Joe, or does or who would like to answer that one? I want to keep spreading this around. Or Bonnie. Oh, no, no, Ray, you've got your hand up. Ray, please answer. That'd be great. One of the one of the options with, and again, there's a lot of options you saw in a couple of those drawings, but by raising the roof, we can put a large window at each end of the sanctuary to bring light in that way. The other thing that we've discussed doing is changing out the glass block windows because you'll know from memory experience since it's been a while, that when you sit in there and the blinds are up on those glass block windows, you get an awful lot of glare out of those windows, but they don't really allow a lot of light in. So changing those out to a, a more of a, a, a natural plain glass window or even a plain glass window with some stained glass will get light without all the glare that we get from those glass block windows. Plus, by raising the roof, one of the things we'll be doing as well is is putting in a different lighting system that I'm sure will function a lot better than the lighting system we have in the in the ceiling right now. Um, I would just like to mention, thank you, Ray, that on either um, of the, you know, the front of the sanctuary and the back of the sanctuary give that north and south light, whereas the sides are east and west. So we're really gaining a lot with the north and expanding the north and the south. Um, any, would anyone like to, I, is it, does anyone else have a question? Because I, I, I would love for one of you on our team to explain too that we're thinking of this in terms of phases as well. 
of not perhaps being able to do the whole thing at once, maybe doing some things at the beginning while we're lucky enough to be out of the sanctuary and then um, do things in that way. Does anyone have a handle on that question? Bonnie? <laughs> Are you raising your hand? <laughs> no, I'm not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ray. Okay, well, Ray is again, so we'll... You're saved. <laughs> Getting back to some of the original work, uh, raising the roof that changes the, the wall figuration configuration at both ends of the building. So adding those windows, the roof and the end windows at the front and back of the sanctuary obviously be, be part of phase one. But even something like changing out the glass block windows is something that doesn't have to happen as part of the original job. And that can be that can be spread out until later on. Uh, a couple other things we might have to consider right away is addition of handicap access, because with a project of this size, we know we're going to have to meet ADA requirements as far as what's available for handicap situations. But you know, some of it will will happen over time. And, right. and some people love the carpet so much that we may <laughs> keep the carpet for like phase five. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Rick. Please. Because, you know, the, the whole process of taking a roof off and putting a new roof on, you're going to destroy, destroy what's ever there. So those of you who love that green carpet, I'm sorry. That. We, we will offer as a fundraising option you can buy a square of that carpet to take home and hang it and put it in your house or something. Okay, and and um, I think Fred, you got your hand up, and Fred has he is knows acoustical engineering, and he's been an incredible resource during this time. He's the one who let us know that the that sad day when we discovered that the trusses would make the sound go really wonky. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just going to say we we really, you know, right now just looking at the drawings and uh, not seeing exactly all of the factors that are going to go into raising the roof. We're not going to be certain about what the acoustics will be like. So we do have a back plan in case there are problems with the acoustic again, although I don't anticipate that there will be. But just in case, one of the later things that will be added will be a shell for the for the choir. Uh, so that would be one of the phase two or phase three additions to the building. But, you know, um, the, the, as you all know, the acoustics are terrible in that space right now. Yeah. I was always so amazed that we had to use reinforcement in such a small space. I mean, actually, that isn't a large space to speak of. So anything we do is going to be a major improvement yeah. on, on that. There's no question about it. Thank you, Fred. I, and I think, um, Art, you got your hand up and then... Um, and and then Joe and I don't see both screens so send a message through the chat if you have a hand up and nobody's seeing you so Art go ahead and then Joe well when we built our new church building in Houston it had a very high pitched roof it was more of a square room with a opening you know in the center with beams going up and um, so it had a very high ceiling and the ceiling was basically sheet rock, similar probably to what we would do. And it had a carpeted floor because it was also a fellowship hall as well as a sanctuary. And the acoustics were not good. Yeah, but that carpet. So, so you know, you would probably want to start obviously with no, no soft floor covering and see how it goes mm -hmm. and then modify as necessary. Well, and we, we've thought about a wooden kind of floor, engineered floor, because that would add to the natural, yeah, natural materials. Joe, you're, you're muted. Where's Joe? Right in the middle. Yeah. Got to hear my voice for it to yep. pop. Yeah. All right. Um, I just want to acknowledge that one voice you would be hearing loud and clear today is Selena Hubens if they weren't out. Yes. She's had a lot to say about acoustics and 
those of you that have been here for a while remember one day when uh, she was supposed to be reminiscing during our, our year of uh, celebrating our past and she went into an explosion, but we got to tear the ceiling out. We've got to change it. <laughs> So strongly about it and uh, I think it would be I think we should absolutely get the choir to go in there and sing something right now and we can trace uh, have a video that sort of shows the the development of acoustics because it's a, a really important part of this to a lot of people and I, I would just acknowledge the contributions that art has brought to this process because he chaired all those meetings we had after church where we talked about office space and restrooms and brings his vast experience from uh, having been through a beginning to end remodel in their former congregation. Mm -hmm. So he's been a big part of the early development of this and, and uh, brings firsthand experience. That's really helpful. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Thank you. And it looks like Marilyn, is that your hand up? No. Are you just waving at us? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, that's okay. Okay. Right, right up in the corner. But okay. no, I, I was just stretching. Okay, <laughs> like the auctions where you go like this and you buy a painting. Okay, so Fred, Fred, go ahead. I just wanted to say, if you know, as the acoustics are really important, if everybody would like this, I would be willing to offer a sort of 101 you know, acoustics 101 workshop so that you can understand a little about how acoustics work and how sound works. And if people are interested in that, uh, we would be more than willing to provide a little workshop about acoustics. And, and I also must say that Fred Kraps is the one who got the piece of ceiling out and sent it to the laboratory, fancy laboratory in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we have a certificate that we have no asbestos. Thank oh. you, Fred. You are our hero. Rick. Yeah, I'd like to ask Fred, um, I th the issue of the acoustics, right now it is totally dead. Uh, if once the once the trusses were out and you had a pitch ceiling, are are you you the concern is that it might be too echoey or too live? And if that's the case, I think there are a variety of things that could be done to reduce echoing. Is that not correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, you know, a lot of this is going to be a lot of the concerning of the raising of the ceiling for me is going to be the actual angle and pitch of that. You know, because one of the things that people don't understand, if you stand on a hilltop above a highway, you can really hear that highway. And the reason for that is sound waves rise. They rise and bend. So if we have a really steep kind of pitch, we can have that sound rising and bending into the ceiling and causing a lot of reverberations coming back. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have in the plans for the future, if that turns out to be the existent uh, problem, we will build a shell for the, for the uh, choir. So which, what that does is tries to direct that sound out and prevent it from rising too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that, that's one of the things we won't know. Well, I guess we could compute it once we get the final plans. Once we get those final plans for exactly that, we can begin to compute it and have some sense of whether or not we're going to have an acoustical problem, just like what you had with yours, Art. I mean, that, that is a very serious thing. That's why, are you familiar with the acoustical domes that they used to build in all the opera houses and stuff? Those were built to be able to handle that sound, handle that rise of the sound and bring it back in a way that was more natural. Uh, so yeah, that, that's something we're gonna have to look at in the, in the future. Uh, thanks for the question, Rick. Anyone else? Colette. Looks like you have a hand and then Peter. Yeah, um, I basically have not much to say at all, but I was just curious, um, you know, reclaimed materials can be so wonderful and that could also bring costs down. I don't know what you guys have been talking about or doing with that, but sometimes you can find so many beautiful things that and, and, and reclaim them. So that's, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if you already talked about it or not, so. Thank you. Yeah, um, we're, we're, everything's on the table. 
right now. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Peter, it looks like you had a question too. Yeah, and it's simple and it's, it's for Fred. Uh, so if, if I extend what you were saying, you can actually, by designing the, the relative surfaces, according to some pitch and some formulas that you would know, you can actually predict how lively an auditorium that we would have. Within a certain degree, yes. Cool. It's still, it's still, acoustics is, although, you know, everything's a science these days, uh, but acoustics really still is um, not, not a, a pure science. I, I would not put it a pure science. You know, you can make the best predictabilities in the world about what the acoustics are, and you go in there, and the place is just terrible. You know, oh, so, uh, but you you could you do your best guess. You know, it's a black art. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any, um, Michael? Oh, you're muted. There we go. There we go. Um, just, just curious. The drawings that you now have in hand are—are are they online so we could look at them and formulate some more questions, or is this just like keep going from where we're at? We're we're going to have the video. We're going to have the video online, um, okay. and we have lots of drawings. I mean, whatever you're oh. interested in, we can send. But oh. today, today from one to three in the building there will be um you know lots of drawings there to look at um, so those drawings are they up at this point are we asking the congregations for opinions or no we are asking for opinions okay yeah all right just curious we had to get it to a certain point so that it was you could ask i mean people had could ask questions oh yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah. i get it believe me yeah, this I know because you're you were in building too. <laughs> okay, Ray, you have a question. Uh, regarding Michael's question about opinions, we are definitely soliciting opinions at this point. And if you do make it in between one and three, we're gonna have legal pads at all of our different little stations for people to write down comments, concerns, questions, suggestions, and ask you to write your name along with those so that you know, as we follow up with this, you know, we, we can check back in with people and, and we're inviting people to join the committee. You know, we're not limiting the size of the committee at this point. So if more people want to be there and come in on Thursday afternoons and, and sit in and, and speak their piece, we welcome that. No, thanks. Thanks. And, and I just don't know that I, I don't know that I've had enough time to even raise poignant questions at this point. Sure. Sure. But I'll get there. <laughs> Michael, you have a beautiful house behind you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I just got a message from Tony Dennis that said her, her brilliant husband, Andy, knows how to put the design into a simulator. Tony, do you want to bring that up or say anything? Uh, yeah, it's something that uh, we could help out with because if we had the dimensions and um, anything, it, that they have. anything that you have for the design, then we could put it together and wow. and see what the program says. Wow. Yay! It's AI. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. That would be fabulous. Wow. Well, I think Norma. I don't have a question. I just have a comment that I was just thinking, you know, based on our ability to collect enough money that we went over our budget, um, that now we're, we're coming from a place of bounty versus <laughs> poverty. And I think that this is exactly the, 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 something that's going to change mm -hmm. how we look at things how we can do things mm -hmm. yay norma hey well maybe on that note on that note why don't because the people who are going to go to prepare their places in the sanctuary need a little time 
and they need to eat something. So <laughs> I, I, I'm still, I, I loved those. Those seemed like the perfect closing words, unless somebody else has, has some kind of um, driving, um, and I can't see everybody. We got, okay, we've gotten down to one screen. People are clearing out. So I guess that's it. Excuse me, Patty. <laughs> Thank you all. Yes. Oh, it's course. Karen and I'm on a phone. Okay. I sent a chat question and I didn't hear it addressed. Did you, do oh, you, you have chat? What? Um, I, nobody, it didn't come through. Well, I was just curious. I, I like the um, look of the roof line and it looks really pristine and wonderful. But are we talking about screens or assorted screens and all the audio video equipment and how that's going to be incorporated and then change the look of that interior roof line? Um, you know, we're a lot of churches have dealt with this. So I I think that I mean we've we've talked a lot. I think we're gonna shift where the choir Lou wants to shift the position of the choir because the because the piano is backwards and so the sound is going into the choir rather than into the room. <laughs> so um I think we're gonna switch where the the screen is. But we've been we've been thinking of all those things about okay. you know making sure that worship won't suffer from. So, and what, have, have, so what, we mean, what we mean by that is if you look at the piano, the piano lid goes up only one direction on every grand piano, and the way that we have to position our piano now, if that piano lid goes up, it's going into the choir. So if we turn that completely 180 degrees. Then if there's a concert or we really want to hear the piano, it will go out instead of into the stairs which, there. Which Why means, don't you just buy a left-handed piano? Perfect. <laughs> so, Karen, I, I looked into it. I think what that means is that the screen will move sides. Okay, well, I, I was hoping that we were looking at multiple ideas for the technology and the audio and maybe multiple screens kind of thing and not just limiting to what we are used to. So I just want to well, hope that we do some of that thinking. Well, I would suggest that you bring your ideas, but I know you're in a really busy situation now. We've just been thinking of things and, and this is time to Go think ahead. of those things. So I, I, we'd love your ideas, really. Okay. Right. Well, I'm not I would talk with Warren Miller too about some of those ideas because yeah, he's I hope, got I that hope experience he, too. Yeah, I hope he joins in the process now too. And okay, thank yeah, you. Thank you, thank you, Karen. And Did Fred, I, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I did. We just actually sort of broached that in the last meeting last Thursday. We talked about the possibilities of extending back over the offices and putting in a control booth and, and that kind of stuff. We are just beginning to broach that aspect of it. Uh, but but it is in everybody's mind, actually, Karen. Thanks for the question. Yeah, because I, you know, until <laughs> actually, until we had our last meeting all together, all of us were trying to go, 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 keep the trusses. <laughs> so we're, <clears throat> this is just kind of the path has been opening up in unusual ways, which would have made the screens um, much more problematic or moving them around. Lydia, do you have a question or are you, you're just smiling at us? I, I, you're, but we can't hear you. I'm laughing at us. She's laughing at us. We, you're muted. How we diffuse the gone <laughs> oh she, <laughs> she's leaving oh wait she left okay a anyone else have any any questions okay okay i'll see you at the sanctuary okay thank you all